Watching John with the machine, it was suddenly so clear. The Terminator would never stop. It would never leave him. And it would never hurt him, never shout at him or get drunk and hit him or say it was too busy to spend time with him. It would always be there and it would die to protect him. Of all the would-be fathers who came and went over the years, this thing, this machine, was the only one who measured up. In an insane world, it was the sanest choice. Say make. These were taken at the West Highland Police Station, 1984. You were there. Same model. And the same model was just uploaded to Thingiverse, November 2020. New video. Once, it was programmed to control his printer. Now, it's programmed to film it. His loyalty is to a channel. And his enemy is the deadliest machine ever created. Can it be destroyed? Unknown. Tutorial 2, Electronics Day. This time he's back for good. Come with me if you want to learn. In the distant future, a machine will be completed. This machine will be modified to become the cheapest and most versatile camera rig known to man. It will be almost entirely 3D printed and computer controlled, and its evolution is inevitable. <sighs> I'm pretty confident that intro showed you guys just how cool this camera rig is. This guy even thinks that this is the perfect robot arm for cameras. Well, at least 25% of you are still here, uh, according to the uh, retention numbers from my last video. Hopefully there's not going to be too many discrepancies. It's absolutely amazing to see that many people interested in this project, but it has been like a year and a half since I've worked on this video. Before we build this thing and get into all the parts I used and how I control it, I wanted to cover a couple of the comments from that last video, just so we're all on the same page of what this project does currently, as well as what the potential of what it could do. Encoders, encoders, encoders. This weekend, hundreds of commenters mentioned the ground-pounding option of encoders to manually track camera moves and replay them right before your eyes. Disclaimer, encoders will not be demonstrated in this video. I swear to God, I'm going to subscribe to the next person that says encoders. Hey, Chris. What's that device that will report feedback positions from an electrical motor? Encoders? So if you've uh, fingered your scroll wheel down in the comments section there, you'd see that encoders are definitely the most requested feature on this camera rig. And more specifically, the ability to manually move the camera in a position, record those positions, and then replay those back. And that's totally doable, but I should probably preface this with saying when I designed this machine, I was trying to just build a quick tool, something that I can get up and running, and I didn't want to have to write custom software, firmware. In fact, you don't even need to install motors or electronics. If all you ever did was print this and assemble it, you'd still have a valuable tool. I actually find myself using it powered off just as a tripod or a steady cam. There were some comments regarding the stability and repeatability of this camera rig, so I set up an ultra-scientific measurement method. I just recorded a crazy cycle that I programmed and compared the footage from the beginning position and the returning home position. That cycle took about 20 minutes to complete and despite the discrepancies between the starting position and ending position, I was blown away at how well it actually performed considering all the variables involved from the weight, everything being 3D printed, sitting on a speaker stand, and the whole thing just sitting in my living room on top of carpet but we're slinging nearly 10 pounds of counterweight in the back and a camera rig four feet away from the fulcrum. The uh, keyboard warriors did win one battle though, and depending on which axis you move and how quickly you move it, 
you can see some camera shake in the machine. Now, some of that shake can be reduced within the firmware by adjusting some variables, but ultimately you will have a little bit. Keyboard Warrior wins round two. So the last thing I wanted to mention was just the control solutions you guys came up with for controlling the robot, including ROS and using Blender to generate the G-codes for the movements. The reason I chose basic G-code is because you're up and running immediately. I didn't have to generate a custom piece of software or firmware in order to operate the machine. And there are a few drawbacks, mainly kinematics and, of course, encoders. And that's when this tutorial almost ended, and not because of a failure or the fact that there's only 13% of you still here, but uh, because of something amazing I've found. Apparently the internet works in mysterious ways. I received a comment suggesting I take a look at Botango as a control option. This is definitely a super neat project. It's not too complicated and it would provide proper kinematics for my camera rig, but for now we're sticking to our guns and using the original solution. I do have one more video planned for the whole build process, 3D printing, hardware, all the assembly. Obviously today's video is on the electronics. So I figured the best way to showcase that is probably to show you guys how I control it and then I'll show you how I built it. I'll do a little brief overview of how it's all connected and then we'll get right into control. That's one of my mission parameters. And be sure to check the description below. I've listed all the parts I use in this project and I'll reiterate all the software and hardware I use is all open source and off the shelf components. And it all starts with the Raspberry Pi, which is just running the basic Raspberry Pi OS. There are a couple extra apps installed. Uh, one is VNC Viewer, which is a program that allows you to remotely control your Raspberry Pi from a laptop, desktop, cell phone. The other program I have installed is Universal G Code Sender. And that's a piece of software that allows you to communicate with your CNC controller. In this case, it's an Arduino Mega 2560. And this 2560 has its own firmware loaded up for a six axis CNC shield. And that six axis CNC shield is more or less just a breakout board for stepper motor drivers. But I end up choosing this method just because it's compact and the drivers are more than capable of controlling a NEMA 17 motor. So on this board you'll have six locations for stepper drivers and each one of those drivers can control a stepper motor on your camera rig or robot or whatever project you're working on. And that's basically how these components work together. Uh, obviously you can get more complicated with it, but at the very basic design, this is all you need. I've included a few extra things on my camera rig, including the battery compartment so I don't have to be connected to power the power adapter for my camera so I don't have to worry about changing the batteries, some extra configurations that allow me to use a gamepad controller, and the switches up front that allow me to disable individual stepper motors and manually lock down the machine. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man and on to the next section of this tutorial and returning him safely to the earth. Motion control. We're a go for next sequence. No sir, we're down to 9.5% viewer retention rate, but we were expecting those deviation numbers at this time. Over. Okay, all operators watch your data carefully. Using manual G-code was definitely the simplest solution for us to achieve our goal of a motion control camera robot. And despite the limitations with kinematics and trajectories, it was ultimately a race to get the machine working with uh, an emphasis on future development in the control software. The idea is actually super simple and since it uses a basic CNC controller, we just treat it like a CNC machine. And out of the hundreds of codes available to control those machines, we only need a handful of them to operate this one. And you guys are here because you're the best of the best and I want to thank you for your dedication and subscription to this YouTube channel. Now in our last lesson, you learned all about the components that went into this machine. Now I'm going to show you how to control those components. I won't be covering the installation of the Raspberry Pi operating system or its initial configuration. There's plenty of great tutorials out there that show you how to get your Raspberry Pi up and running as well as configuring VNC as your remote desktop. Once you're up and running you can head on over to the GitHub page for Universal G-Code Sender. The software doesn't actually have to be installed so just go ahead and download it onto the desktop and unzip the files. 
Navigate over to the USG platform folder and then into the bin folder. Go ahead and double click on USG platform and that'll get the software running. You can actually set this software to run on startup so you can avoid this step the next time you want to use the camera rig. At this point you should have your Raspberry Pi all loaded up and configured with BNC and Universal G-Code Sender. And you should also have your Arduino Mega 2560 loaded up with the firmware for the 6-axis CNC shield. And that shield's not installed right now because we're only changing the parameters. But one super important note to make is that before you actually try to control your robot, you adjust the stepper current for each individual motor. There's a couple of different motors on this robot and each one requires a different setting and you can mess up a motor by not having this setting correct. I realize most of the people watching this video aren't going to build this fucking thing, but I'm still going to show you guys how easy it is to set up and control. Let's get everything connected and configured. The initial setup has to be done while connected to the Raspberry Pi, as the Universal G-Code Sender web interface doesn't provide a console to easily edit settings. Most of the variables are intended for a CNC machine, but we only need to be concerned with a few of them. The most important variable is the travel resolution. I figured the most intuitive way was to calibrate all rotational axis for 0 to 360 degrees. If you want the robot to spin 360 degrees, you tell it to move 360 millimeters. The arm doesn't rotate continuously, so I calibrated that for 0 to 100 millimeters, or another way to think about it would be 0 to 100 percent. The next item we're going to set is the maximum rate, which defines how quickly each stepper motor can actually spin. There's a caveat here as well, which is the faster stepper motors go, the less torque they have. If you set this too high, you're going to stall out the motor. The next important item is acceleration, and this defines how quickly the motor will speed up and slow down from its maximum speed. You can play around with the acceleration, but be aware that high acceleration will lead to jerky movements. If you go too high, you'll actually stall out the stepper motor. I'll put the settings I use in the description below, but feel free to change them around for your own application. The last thing we need to cover are the G-codes in order to get this robot moving. There's a couple of different ways you can control this robot. You can log in remotely through VNC Viewer, or you can use the web interface through Universal G-Code Sender. And I actually tend to use both of them at the same time. I'll use VNC and the text editor to create and save a move and I'll use the Pendant app to do simple jogging and also get a visual display of where the machine's at. There are two coordinate systems that we'll use, and the start of your program should define which one you want to use. Here's a quick example of how that works on this robot. G90 defines absolute positioning. The machine will respond to all movements from the working datum or home position. G91 defines movements as incremental. I pretty much only use G90, aka absolute positioning. It's just way easier to program moves and maintain repeatability. G code is ran line by line and you can put multiple moves in the same line and multiple lines in the same program. The speed numbers are a little bit arbitrary, so you probably just have to play around a bit to find the speed that works for what you're doing. One last code I use is G4, which can be used to program a delay before moving on and processing the next line. Now I want to congratulate this class on making it this far into the program. Now this was a brief discussion on the G codes we used to get this machine moving, but hopefully that information is going to help you guys out in the real world when you're controlling your own motion controlled camera robot. I'll go ahead and roll the graduation music. If anybody needs me, I'll be in my office programming more shots. So this is a six axis robot, meaning I have the ability to control the pan, tilt, elevation, rotation, zoom, and the focus. But I did run into another problem. It's not an issue with the camera rig, but the camera itself. The focus function on my camera is actually variable and not linear. So the focus would be in a different spot depending on how fast you turn the ring on the camera. For the time being, I've utilized the focus motor for a different purpose. 
If you didn't need the zoom or focus functions, you can actually just use a 4-axis controller, which are way more common, and you can save money on the assembly. The small gearhead motors are the most expensive ones on the whole camera rig. Luckily, my camera does have wireless features, so I'm able to control settings and the focus from here, which makes things a little easier. Uh, ultimately, this camera rig is not a commercial product, and it's not a replacement for the Bolt camera or something like that. But it is pretty amazing what you get for the price tag. End of quote, repeat the line. It is pretty amazing what you get for the price tag. Most of the time I'm not even using the uh, program features. I'll just be setting up a shot and this lets me be the photographer and the subject at the same time. If you did need to program a move, it's actually pretty simple. It took me maybe 10 minutes to set up that whole roundabout sequence. It actually took me way longer to get this into the camera without looking like a complete re- Damn it! Who took on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. I'll be back.